Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for forgetting that you are a powerful God. Forgive us, Father, for forgetting that you can do all things. Hello, everybody. Greg Winslow here with another episode of I Was Podcast. Today we have another amazing testimony of a transformed life. And I just want to give an intro with a, a verse uh, I think that expresses what we're going to be sharing, and that's in John chapter 4. Jesus goes into the village of Samaria. He meets a woman. The woman believes in Jesus, and then she begins to go and tell everybody. And in John chapter 4, verse 39, it says, Numerous Samaritans from that town believed on him on account of the woman's testimony. And that is definitely the story of Pastor Joey Perez here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, Pastor Joey, welcome. Uh, I know you have a, an amazing testimony, and I know a lot of people are coming to know the Lord because of your powerful testimony and how you share it. So welcome and thank you for doing this interview. Amen. I'm excited to you know be here and be able to share, and hopefully that many other lives would listen and and, and, and make a decision for their lives for Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, that is the purpose of these I Was broadcasts, is we want to get the testimony, the words of the testimony out to the people so that if they're in this type of situation, they'll have a hope by seeing someone who is in the same situation as them and, and come out. So, Pastor Joey, why don't you tell us how you were in a gang lifestyle, uh, a drug dealer lifestyle, what led you into that? Well, um, I started off pretty young. That, that, that's the, the thing that kind of mo most of the time in my life has me uh, even questioning today. Um, um, when I see little children, how you know they look so innocent at, at the age of eight, nine years old. Well, I wasn't. I didn't look. Uh, I, uh, to me, I lost that, and the reason I lost it was, I guess, because of the family I come from. My father was a a very violent man and uh, had a reputation for shooting and stabbing people. And um, and I mean, people really respect him, but out of fear. And uh, from there on, you know, living in a home like that, you know, um, I ended up falling down, down you know, on, on the wrong side. By the time I was 12, I was already uh, in and out of juvenile homes. By the time I was 12, matter of fact, by the time I was nine, I was already being arrested for burglary. Wow. That age, that's what I, that's what puzzles me about, you know, when I try to figure out how, how I was there for to do stuff like that. And then by the time I'm 12, you know, I, I, like I had shared with you earlier, I, 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 I was in a, and I did a, a rob the supermarket, not even, no, not even scared. Walked in broad daylight with three other guys, robbed it, then uh, got caught, and then was in a new study center for a few months. Then when I got what age out, was that? Uh, that was that was the age of ten. Ten. Yeah, uh, the age of twelve was when when I was I was already going in and out of uh, police station, ju juvenile homes, going to court, and then uh, by the time I was twelve was when I robbed the supermarket. And then once we robbed the supermarket, then we end up, I end up uh, once I got out wait, waiting to go to trial, I end up burglarizing a police officer house, almost killed his father, you know, because they saw my face. I stole the police guns and everything. So I was in the newspapers and everything, television news, uh, um, and everybody, you know, my life was just going downhill. By the time I was 15, I was uh, facing a lot of time in jail because, you know, being already in, in gangs at that age. A lot of my gang members were like three, four years older than me, but they feared me because of my reputation. And what did your parents say when you got into all this trouble? But what can, can, what can my parents say? One, one of the things I, 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 I share is that my mother, my mother paid a heavy price because my father was a man that that worked, and he was a sub. He was a contractor uh, with thirteen subcontracts. You know, working. You know, as a subcontractor, he had thirteen people working for him, and he worked for a lot of big companies. So, but he he was always running around. You know, with women and everything. My mom was the one that had a. You know, even though when he gave her money, it was never enough. It was ten of us, five boys and five girls. But the thing is that my mother, um, you know, sometimes when she would go and do groceries and, and shop for clothes, she would take clothes, fold it up, and stick it in her pants in the back with a big coat. Little by little, she didn't know that down the line she would pay a heavy price for that because we ended up learning how to steal. Mm -hmm. And she was doing it because she was trying to take care of her children. But by the time I was 15, you know, I was in gangs, already had been arrested for shooting people, sniping people, 
Um, I, where I was end up, I end up in a government program that do, I was supposed to do like two years there and then one year come back to Philadelphia because I end up in Indiana to come back to Philadelphia to go to a, a, the, to the dub prison. Um, Cause by then I was already turning 18. Um, but when I was still there, uh, I, at 14 months being there, <laughs> I was kicked. I was sent back to Philadelphia. They said they they put me out because out of 23 young people that were in the program, there was all from different states, and a lot of them were from different gangs in different states. So Philadelphia would be fighting Chicago. And next thing you know, you know, I end up uh, getting kicked out of there and came back to Philadelphia. And um, and when I came back. I turned 18, so they kind of like let me go. So they just gave me uh, three years probation, and you know, to me that was like 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 uh, the glory for me because now I can go ahead and do what I want to do, and I'm not subject to none of these um, you know um, people that has to deal with courts. But then from there on, you know, at the age of 18, I had um, I, I started a new gang, and my brother he was a uh, what they call the warlord. He's the one that tells you when we're going to go to fight. And I'm the leader. I'm the one to tell everybody what we're going to do. And back in the next thing I know, by that at that age of 18, they I had my brother murdered in front of me. Now I've been, I seen, I had about 13, 12 of yeah, 13 of my gang members that were killed. Young guys. None of these guys ever made it past the past of 18. But everybody looked up to me as as you know because of my reputation. You know, being people that want to be my want to be my friend. It wasn't because they really want to be my friend. They just want to be my friend for protection. Uh, how did you get that type of respect from them? Were you a violent person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, I was a violent person with other people, like my lifestyle, not the people in the neighborhood. We took care of the neighborhood. We want, we we will not let nobody come in our neighborhood, okay, and and start a fight with somebody in a party or something. If they went up for the neighborhood. Hopefully, they made it out. Cause a lot of times, a lot of them they end up in the hospital, you know, in critical. Because, but the thing was, um, a lot of my anger had to do with where when I was a little kid, you know, 12, going back to 12, my father wanted to make me an obedient son. And what he did was he chained me up by my neck. And when he chained me up by my neck, I made a pact with the devil. I told the devil that if he gave me the power to kill my father when I'm 18, I'll do whatever he wants. Well, I guess they did. I tried to kill my father at the age of 14. Home, and me and my brother, my oldest brother, Mike, he was a year and a half older than me. My father shot at us, almost killed us, and then uh, and then by uh, by the time we were 18, my brother gets killed in front of me. When he died, I died. I, I lost everything. I had no feelings. I, I had nothing. So um, all I know when we buried him, I made a promise. I said, Mikey, if I got if I got to kill 17, uh, you know, if I got to kill a lot of people, man, to get to get revenge on what they did to you, I'm going to do it. Within 30 days after we buried my brother. I was in, I would end up in Emeryville State Hospital. I end up in prison, from one prison to another prison, for shooting people, knifing people. Um, the 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 thing that, that 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 gets me is that I'm I'm looking at a lot of time in, in prison, and and I had an experience. It, it, it's, I wrote the book Mysteries of Angel. You'll hear about that experience, even in the first book I wrote, where. I was when I was in prison. I'm over here, 18 years old, waiting 40 to life sentence. I had to go to court, and the guard came up to my cell. And when he came to my cell, he said to me, he called me by my name. When I went over to him, I said, "So I said, what do you want?" He said, "Listen, he said you got 18 charges against you, and you're going to court this week, right?" And I said, "Why are you asking me all of this question? Why? Why are you telling me that?" I said, "Matter of fact, are you new here? Because I've never seen you here." And he said, "Yeah, I'm new here." So he said, when you go to court this week, they're going to drop 15 of your major charges. The other three are going to be time served. You're going to pay a fine, and you're going to be out. Just remember this, Joe. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. And when he said that, I just started cursing at him, yelling at him, because I, 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 didn't, I, didn't you know, I didn't know what love was, first of all. And, 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 and all this anger and rage from being chained up in a basement for three days, I, I was supposed to be there a week. So next thing you know, um, I go to court, exactly what that guard said happened. They gave me 15 charges dropped, major charges. They dropped them. The other two, the other three, time served, paid a fine. I came back to the prison waiting to get released. It, you know, I know it's going to take a couple of days for the release to come. So when I got back, I walked in through the doors, and I asked the two guards there. I said, Mr. Bell, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, um, where's that new guard that just started working here about two weeks ago? 
They looked at me and they said, what, what, what guard? A guy with the white hair, he looked Hispanic or look, you know, uh, Irish or something, a real light-skinned guy. And they said, they looked at each other, and I'm looking, why y'all looking at each other? Listen, we haven't hired a, guard, a new guard here in four and a half years. Wow. And I said, listen, a, that, a guard, new guard, he said he was new, came to my cell, everything he said happened. They said, listen, we haven't hired a new guard in this jail for four and a half years. When he said that, I said, who, anyway, who cares? I'm getting out of here. But as I was walking away, they said, yo, ain't that that young kid, man, that, that was all in the newspaper trying to shoot it out with the police force in Phoenixville? And he said, yeah, boy, they, boy, they need to send him back to every real state hospital. That boy's just flipping. Mm. So from there on, just kept on, you know, and got back on the street, started in gangs again. My sister, my, my oldest sister was a big drug lord, you know, drug dealer. So I took over her business. Um, 19 years old, tailor made clothes, you know, thousands and thousands in my pocket, 32 drug dealers. I, I got 32 drug dealers you know, you know, working for me. I got a gang of 250 guys. But the only thing is that if a lot of people, these young people today, they don't know what they're getting into. You know what it is? Uh, I shot people, night people, and, and, and all I had was nothing but nightmares in my dreams. People shooting me, people stabbing me, people killing me. I, and, and then I, I will walk into a funeral in the viewing and walk up to, to the casket, and the person in the casket was me. I used to wake up screaming. My mother would come and run into the room. What's wrong? It was because the Bible says a sinner run, although no one seeks him. So, I, so in my dreams, even though I didn't know God, I had a conscience, and my conscience was judging me I, because I was always wondering when, when my time was going to come. Did you ever get shot or stabbed? Well, yeah, they stabbed me 17 times. I was only 17 years old. They stabbed me 17 times. My brother, it was seven of us. My gang, well, we ran, we was running to get to the other side of the street to get the other gang to come over. So when they were chasing, they they had hit, caught one of our guys. And when I turned around, I went back to save him. Well, guess what? They stabbed me three times in my heart, four times in my neck, ten times in my back. But what happened was, you ain't gonna believe this. When they were stabbing me, I hit the floor. And all I thought I was going to die, I was dying because I felt all this hot water. Like, like I thought it was blood running through my body. And when, when my gang came back, when the guy saw that, they ran. And my, my gang came back. They picked us both up. They threw us in the car. And they said, they dead. He dead. He dead. And they said, but then when they took off my leather coat, they took off. It was in the wintertime. They took off my two sweatshirts. Now, one knife went through my body. You can see my leather coat, all the holes where I was stabbed. Two of my gang members say, somebody's with you. Somebody's with you. When they, when a guy was stabbing you in your back, your body just kept going in. It kept going in. When they were stabbing you in the front on your neck, listen, your body just kept going back. Listen, somebody with you. And I've been shot at so many times. Bullets went right by me. My father shot at me four times. I mean, I've been stabbed a, a couple other times. Never in my life received a, a blade. Your home life must, must my whole life. Yeah, chaos. never got shot or stabbed. But I had a lot of, my brother killed in front of me and 13 other my dr uh, gang members. Wow. So your life just must have been chaos every day, one chaotic day after another. I didn't have no peace. I can't you know, imagine. You know, uh, like, like the Bible said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave you, not as this world give, I give unto you. Listen, this world does not give you peace. Yeah. So the thing is that, that I, I, I'm at a point in my life where I don't even believe in God. I never believed in God anyway. I didn't believe in Jesus. I didn't believe in the devil. My father and my mom. My father was strong in the witchcraft. My mother was practicing, believed in it a lot, and also did little stuff. But I didn't believe in that. And so they, how did you get out of this? Well, the, 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 the thing, it's a long story, man, but I cut it real short for you. <laughs> the thing is, I got to a point in my life where I was so tired. I'm tired of, of, of not having no peace at night. I'm now I got drug dealers. I'm, I'm I'm sending people to kill them. You know I want y'all kill these guys. I'm and and people offering me to kill people, contract killings and everything. Now I wasn't no contract killer. Everybody you know people people are shot that they were trying to kill me. So I'm trying to save my life. That that's the lifestyle out there that that, that young people don't know. That listen the like the lifespan. What is it from the age of 16 to 21? If you make it. And if you pass 21, you're probably only going to live to about 25. If you pass 25, you might live a long life. Yeah. So the thing is that that um, well, I got to a point where I, I you know, started hearing voices and everything telling me that if there's a God in heaven, he's never going to forgive me anyway. 
And one day I just started start hearing that voice, and that voice said, if you want to find peace, because I already was there. How many times I put, people don't know that. How many times I put guns on my forehead? I wanted to die. I didn't have no peace. I always walking paranoid, knowing that sooner or later, when this thing catch up to me, they're gonna, I'm going to die a horrible death. The next thing I know, as I'm thinking about, I, you know, I hear this voice say, but if you're going to die, don't go by yourself. Take a lot of people with you. You know that's what's happening to our young people today, right? You see all these young people going to schools, and all, all of that got to do with all the stuff that they're involved in. A lot, a lot of this uh, uh, worldly rap stuff that they be rapping and the, the words that they use, all of that stuff plays a big part in it too. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, when I started making a list, the first one was my father. I said, I'm going to kill him. My, the second one was my oldest brother because he was sticking on my drug dealer. The third one was my mother. She already blamed me for my brother getting killed. So I said, I'll take that so she don't have to suffer my other brother's death because she was still suffering my brother's death. And then I went down the line, you know, and I had, you know, four people I sent to get killed, four people I'm offering, they're offering me to kill them and all this. And I, I got to a point where I said, you know what, when I'm done, I'm going to take all these people, take all that 40000 give it to my little sisters and all, and then that's it. I'm going to walk in the police station. I'm going to shoot it out. I said, who oh, no, knows, maybe they'll write a movie, make a movie of my life or write a book about me or something. Next thing I know, I heard a voice and it was like thunder. Jose! When they called me, my whole body jerked. Where were you when that happened? What happened was that my parole officer was trying to put me in prison. So because he, I'm walking around, I, I don't have a job. I'm making tons of money selling drugs. I'm always, you know, dressed up in nice clothes and everything. And what happened was that, that when, so I used this job as an escape. Okay, because I had to get a job. So a friend of mine, one of my drug, uh, clients, told me about this job because I told him what was going to happen. Listen, they told me I'm going to stay for five years. So he said, uh, I got to get a job. Uh, so maybe I get a job, work five, six months, and quit, or three months. I don't have to be out here because I got people selling drugs. I end up in a company, 1,000, 1,500 employees. They, I used to hear people, it was an automotive manufacturer company. So in that company, when, when I went there, I used to hear people like early in the morning, like yelling. And I wonder why are these people yelling so much? So I said, maybe, maybe because of all the iron stuff that they throw around, the water pumps and all of that, the calipers, but it wasn't. I found out that when I was there, I found out there was guys who were doing drugs in, a, in, in the parking lot. So I, I introduced myself, got acquainted with a couple of them, started, and I, now I got nine new drug dealers, 30, 32 in the streets from my neighborhood. Even my young sister was selling drugs for me, her and her, and her husband, and I got nine guys there. Now I'm making so much money selling drugs in that company that, that they, they sent me to the warehouse. When they sent me to the warehouse, I didn't want to go. And the reason was because I couldn't watch my business there. But they told me if I didn't go, they are going to have to release me. And, and, I, and I couldn't afford, you know, being laid off because my, you know, my PO, which is, you know, probation officer, parole officer, they're trying to put me away. Mm -hmm. So... I had to stay there, so I went through the warehouse. When I went there, I found uh, there was about 25 people with me. Um, one day, the, when, when the foreman came and he took me to work, he said to me, he said, uh, can I ask you a question? And he, he said, where you from? I said, I'm from North Philly. And I said, why are you asking me that? He said, um, do you know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin? And I said, oh, man, you're one of those religious people? He said, no, I'm a Christian. He said, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross to clean you of all your sins. He died for you because he wants to make you a new creation and give you peace. He said, when you walked into that door, you don't have no peace. And I said, look, I don't want to hear this stuff about Jesus, okay? I don't. And so he said, listen, Joe, there's 12, 25 people here with you today. Twelve of us, we're Christian. You see that in the room over there? We pray every morning for the, for the Christians here. The warehouse, the plantation you just came from has about, they have a chapel there inside the building. Every morning, three, four hundred Christians go in there and they pray before they start working and we play for all the employees. I said, well, look, if you, I don't want to hear this Jesus stuff because the first one of y'all that try to preach this Jesus stuff to me, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to crucify y'all and y'all going to be heck shit and blood on the cross. And he said, Joe, Jesus loved me and walked away. Now, I didn't know if they started a mission to get me saved because the next day they brought me coffee, a donut, a track, and a piece of paper said, Jesus love you. And for about 30 days, I just kept throwing it in the trash. So then, so then they shipped two other guys over to the warehouse, a Polish guy named Bob Small Mickey and an Irish guy named William Ray. So we used to do drugs on the other building. So I told them, so we started there, and they said, yo, I told them, watch out, man, they, they, they got a mission on us. What do you, he said, what do you mean? They're they trying to get us saved. 
So I tried, one of the Christian guys, name was John Gallus. Well, he used to be from a gang we used to fight, but he got saved. And when he asked me if I, you know, that if I knew about Jesus. And I said, look, I told you I want to hear that. He said, Joe, I used to be from 12 and popular. I said, yeah, well, you know what? We used to gang war, y'all. So what, you want to fight now? He said, no, 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 no. I just want to talk about Jesus. I got fed up. He, every time, he still tried. One day they had me driving a four lift with, with, a, with, a, with a pallet with four drums full of calipers. Each drum weighs, had 100 calipers, which weighs 1,000 pounds. So I saw that nobody was looking. I, 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 tried, I, I hit the lever so the drums were fall. I tried to kill John Gallashaw, the Christian. The lever hit the wrong lever, almost killed my own self. <laughs> so the next thing you know, here... I go, um, I told the Kazi, the guy, that, the foreman, right? He tells me, he tells me one day, he said, um, he kept trying to talk to Jesus stuff. So he came up to me. Um, I, no, I told William, Ray, I said, Bill, break that window in your house. Give me the rifle and I'm going to go, you know, kill Kazi. I'm going to do a drive-by on him. I'm tired of these Christians trying to Jesus stuff. When I get in the car, right, we get out of work. Kazi gets in his car. I get in my car and I got a brand new car. The joke, they, it didn't even start. Next thing you know, Kazi goes ahead and, 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 and takes off. I come to work the next day, Bill and, and Bob say, Joe, what happened to Kazi? He's still here. I say, look, I think there is a God in heaven there, man, because they, they already tried to kill four of these Christians here. I can't kill them. Everything keeps backfiring. So I say, I leave them alone. One day, I walk in a factory. Kazi comes up to me. And when he came up to me, he said, Joe, he said, come here. You got a lot of problems. I keep telling you, you need Jesus. Look, I don't want to hear the Jesus stuff. He said, I want to show you something. So Kazi takes off his shirt, right? Then he So when he took off his shirt, I thought he wanted to fight. So, you know, so I took off my shirt, threw it on the floor. And said, you know, when I looked at this guy, he looked like Lou Ferrino. Now, he's Italian. He looked, even looked like Lou Ferrino, the, the, the guy that played the movie Hawk back in the yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So when, 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 he, when he took it off, I said, it's a whole lot. I'll be right back. Went in my car, got a little 25 automatic, about that big. So uh, it's a six shooter, seven shooter. So when I, when I came in, I said, you might be big, but I'm going to hit you with this. When I went to point, he said, hold it, what you doing? I don't want to fight you. He said, I want to show you something. He took off his T-shirt. He showed me, he had seven bullet holes. One here, five. One here, one here, one, one here, one here, one here. Then it, it, So two of them went out the back, out of, you know, came out the back of his body. And then he said, I said, wow, where you been in Vietnam? I said, no, Joe. He said, I'm a Christian. He said, I'm going to tell you something. My wife been saved, got saved a year ago, a year, five years ago. She got saved. She was saved for one year. And she started fasting and praying for God to save me. That if I get, So one day the mob called me in, to, to, me and my brother, to take out some people, which means, you know, kill or contract killing. Sure. So when he went in the, in, the, in the clubhouse, what they call the clubhouse, he said he felt, he don't know what happened. He started shaking and shaking and he fell down, his knees were, and he started crying out to God and said, God, forgive me. Okay, okay, I understand it's you. And he said, he said, just something like, like, like a weight came off of my body. And I said, so what are you telling me then? Well, why God let you get shot and stuff? I shot people, I knifed people down. I never got shot. I never got stopped and got in with me. He said, God got a purpose with your life. So I said, I right, forget it. He said, well, anyway, Joe, you don't have to listen. I already, you already planted the seed. When I went to work, all of a sudden, I started, that's why I heard a voice that said, there's a God in heaven. He never going to forgive you. He said, go ahead and kill all those 70 people today. That's when I made the list. When I made the list, all of a sudden, I, well, I don't know what happened. My body just started shaking. And I'm shaking. And I wonder why I'm shaking. And I hear a voice, Jose, when it called me the fourth, first time, my whole body jerked. And I turned around and I said, Sam, John, you called me? They said, no. The voice didn't call me from behind. It was calling me from above. It was like thunder, like the Bible said, like rushing water. Jose, when they called me the second time, I, I turned around, didn't see nobody. When they called me the third time, all I see is a movie screen in front of me. And when I'm looking at it, I can see my whole life in juvenile homes, in government program. I ran away from home when I was 10, living in old houses. All of this is being revealed to me. Mm. And I, so all of a sudden, I started yelling, who are you revealing yourself? But I couldn't see him. All of, all of a sudden, he stopped talking, and like I felt like something lift up off of me, and I started vomiting. So Kazi saw me. He said, you don't look good. I, he said, go on, go on. So I went home. I told my mom, I said, guess what? Mom, something happened. She said, what? A man with a voice of thunder called me three times by my name. And, and, and show me my whole life why I was never shot, stabbed, and killed. She said, oh, Joe, we had the spirit of the Indian. Light candles to the Indian. She did that in witchcraft stuff. Yeah. So I said, I don't believe in that stuff. So my little sister said, Joey, they want you on the phone. 
when I grabbed the phone, it was one of my drug dealers. I said, we got Izzy. If you want us to take him out, which means kill him. I said, no, 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 no. I'm going to take him out. Just hold him right there. I get in my car, shot down the neighbor with my well, drug points. When I get there, I ran into Izzy. When I ran into Izzy, I spit them around, and I put my gun right to his chest. I said, where's my money? So he said, oh, man, I, I, got, I, I got a half of it. I'll get there the rest tomorrow. I got that money now. We can go to my house and get it. Forget about it. When I pushed him back, ready to shoot him, little lady pat me on my shoulder right here. When that little lady pat me on my shoulder, when I turned around, all of a sudden, I see this little lady. She said, here, young man, she gave me four trash. And I said, lady, you crazy. I'm ready to kill this guy. You ain't the with it. Get out of here. She said, young man, I was in my church praying. My church five blocks from here. God said, get up from here. Go to this corner. He's going to show me a young man. He said, when, when I get there, when he show me him, you tell him this. She said, God told me to tell you that he's the one calling you, that he's the one that's fighting the battle for you because he's with you. He's been with you all your life. And he said that he's going to use you for your honor and your glory. When she said, that's a lady, you crazy. I threw the tracks at her. And when I threw the tracks, she started running. She got scared and started running. So I ran after just to scare her. When I was running behind her, I said, I hate you, I hate you. That little old lady stopped. She turned around. And right when I was getting real close, about eight feet away, she said, Jesus love you. Jesus love you. And I flew back. I flew back about seven, eight feet Amazing. back. And I'm all disoriented, right? And all of a sudden, when I got my balance again, and I said, I hate you. She said, Jesus love you. And all of a sudden, she just turned around. I forgot to kill Izzy. I forgot I drove my car there. People saying, what's wrong? I said, I don't know. I don't know. Leave me alone. I'm going home. I'm, I went up. My mom said, where your car? I don't know. The next day, I go to work. And here, when I get there, the guy named Juan used to be one of my drug clients. Got saved. The only one from all the Christians that was able to get next to me. He came up to me. He said, got it. And Joe, Joe, the Lord told me to tell you he's calling you. He's the one that called you. The same thing the old lady said. He says the same thing. Wow. He's going to use you for his honor and glory. If you go to this revival, it's going to be on 6th in Indiana. That's in North Philly. Uh, Pat Thomas Schoolyard is a well-known evangelist daughter. She's only 25 years old. God's going to use her powerfully, using her powerfully, healing people and everything. If you go, you want to get saved. If I go to that crusade and I don't get saved, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill Kazi and the rest of y'all Christians. I'm going to kill all of y'all. He said, no, Joe, you ain't killing nobody today. You getting saved. I didn't know they were fasting and praying already for a whole week. Oh, nice. So next thing I know, when I, so when I went home, took a shower, changed my clothes, ready to go to this crusade, because I'm, I'm trying to find something. I even went to, to witches and everything. and they, 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 The witches wouldn't even open the door. They said I had so many legions of demons that if they cast them out of me, it would go into them. Huh. So even the witches didn't want to help me. Huh. So when I went there, when I, when, when I went, when I was, before I left, I went in my room and I put the window down, not up, down, the top one. And I yelled, God, if you are real, if that's you who's calling me, if that's you who's using these Christians to witness to me, if that is you who revealed yourself to me, I'm going to go to that crusade. If you say there's no rain, no snow, no fire, no devil, no demon, nothing going to stop me. I'm going to receive you. Man, I ain't believe in nothing I said, but the Bible said, call on me. I will answer you. I will speak unsearchable things that you yourself did not know. Jesus said, he who comes in the name of the Lord shall be saved. I didn't know none of this stuff. All I know, I went through the crusade, got there, walked right down. All, you know, walk, When I was walking in, no, I noticed nobody moved out my way. There was about 3,000 plus people there. Wow. So yeah, there was a lot of people. It was in the schoolyard. Uh, it was about 40, 50 churches involved. When I walked through the front, all of a sudden I see uh, all these people shouting and uh, one girl flipped me out, throwing kisses in there. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Man. I said, oh, man. <laughs> if I peep my friends see with these bunch of wackos, they won't think I'm wackos too. So I try to hide. But I tried, that was the biggest mistake. I went over the wall where I saw a whole lot of chairs, folding chairs with cushions on the floor and a bunch of elderly people praying. And I, and I can hear them say, save the drug addict, save the sinner, save the gang members and everything. And all of a sudden, I started feeling uncomfortable. And all of a sudden, I heard the voice again. See, God ain't real. You've been here 20 minutes. God hasn't called you. Go ahead and kill those people today. June 7, 1979, I was walking out that schoolyard. That young lady preaching stopped, completely stopped the whole message. Silence hit the whole place. It was like a cloud. I mean, like a, I don't know, like it's just, nobody, you could hear nothing. Not even cars driving by. And she said, hey, you young man, you that's walking away, hold it. When she said that, I stopped because I looked around and said, ain't nobody else leaving. So when I stopped, 
I said in my mind, just said in my mind, who's she talking to me? She said, yeah, you. When she said that, oh, man, I t- I, my afro, I had an afro beard, mustache. Man, my whole afro went up in the air. <laughs> and I tell you, about 20 demons probably came out then. When, so when she said, to, when I turned around, she said, tonight, God has revealed to me there's a young man here with a blessing from the Lord. And, he, and God said he's going to use you, young man, for, with his, for, for his honor and his glory. Your name is Jose. When she said that, I said, whoa, how did that lady? Nobody, these people here don't know me. All of a sudden, she said, young man, you said if God called you this way, no rain, no snow, no fire, no devil, no demon, nothing was going to stop you. Everything I said in my room, she said it. And all of a sudden, I knew it was God. I'm trying to go up now, and I can't. And I'm trying, and I'm battling. You know what it was? I had too much money and drugs in the street to get saved right now. I had to, people owing me a lot of money. If I get saved, I couldn't go back. And, and I can't carry a gun. And I got too many enemies. But you know what? All of a sudden, my body started shaking. And, my, and I started crying. And all of a sudden, my, I hear a voice that said, now. When it said now, it was like real, like, like hollow, but real light, like a soft, soothing, hollow voice. Now. And it started going down my body like electricity, like, 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 you know, like, like an echo. Now, now. So I started running. When I was running, I'm yelling, God, here I come. Here I come, God. When I got all the way to the front, all of a sudden, the girl that was preaching thought I was going to hit her with the umbrella. I had my umbrella, my coat in my hand. Threw the umbrella, my coat on the floor. And I raised my hands to the sky. I said, God, I am a sinner. I shed her blood. I did a lot of bad things. I do whatever you want. I preach for you. Just make me happy. Set me free. And I had my hand in the air like this. Electricity went through my arm. It was the blood of Jesus. It wasn't electricity. It just kept going down. When it hit my toes, something like a shadow, like a dark, like a, like a smoke, a form of a person just shot out my body. And when it shot out, I did like this. I started rubbing my, my hair like this. And that girl Naomi, she touched me. When she touched me, my, fire, my body felt like somebody took a bucket of hot water and poured it on me. My body was like it was burning, but it was a good sensational feeling, you know. And all of a sudden, it was out being baptized in the Holy Ghost. I got it the whole package the same day. Nice. I turned around. I started yelling, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Man, people are looking at me. They, they didn't know that one of the biggest drug dealers and gang leaders, the whole neighborhood just got saved. And then, man, I left out of there singing a song. Nice. The next day, I went four souls for Jesus. Next day, no, four, nine days later, I went four souls for Jesus. What did the people at work say to you? Oh, but oh, that's what I'm talking about. When, when, I, when I went back the next day, I saw Kazi and, and, and Juan and, and Jan, Jan, Sam and John, and they said, man, what's happening? Man, I got saved. Juan was there that night. That's why he, was, he already had told everybody what happened. So when I got there, because I got there later, that's the first time in my life I ever slept good in my life with peace and woke up late to go to work. <laughs> so next thing you know, um, when when when, when Kazi came and hugged me, you know how the Italians they do, he went and hugged me, kissed me, yo, man, what's all that stuff? He kissed me both sides of my cheek, and he started weeping, man. Man, I, I, if, nine days later, I went for so What, 90 days? The church, the little, found out that the little old lady, six months later, that I threw the tracks in her face, she went to that church. When I got saved, I was with elderly people in the church. There was about 50, and I used to pray with them. I learned how to pray two hours a day with them. Nice. And guess what? The little lady kept watching me. I kept, why this lady keep watching me? After six months, she said, Joe, her, a brother called me. He said, this, I want to talk to you. This sister want to say something. She said to me, do you stand on fourth in Indiana? I said, yeah. You said, wear a big earring in your ear? I said, yeah. She even described it. She said, like, it looked like a little oval thing like this, and it had a big diamond in it. I said, how do you know that? She said, you don't know who I am? And all of a sudden, I, I broke, I started crying. Because I said, no, you're not that lady that, that I threw this stuff in the face. She said, Joey, I've been praying for you for over a year now. And I didn't even know that in six months, God already answered my prayer. You've been right next to me the whole time praying with me. Oh, nice. Yeah, Sister Gonzalez, she died at 94 years old. So, so Joey, that's quite an amazing testimony of how God pulled you out of such a a horrible lifestyle but has blessed you and i'm sure you've preached all over the world and seen thousands come to the lord as a result of your testimony and you've even written a book here i live to tell about it which uh has your testimony but for for sake of this podcast like there might be somebody who thinks game life is is fun is good is profitable 
Or they might be in the same situation as you. They got too much money invested in it and they don't know how to break out. What would you tell somebody watching today who hears your testimony, can identify with you, and 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 is like, I have too much money. I'm, you know, because you, you were sharing some testimonies with me of people who said, once I do this, I'm going to get saved, and they died. And once I do this, I'm going to take care of this business, this, then I'll get saved, and they ended up dying. So what would you say to somebody looking today and, and like, Oh, I just have one more thing I got to do, and then I get saved. What would you say to them? Well, I tell them that, that that's not promising, first of all. Because, you know, like death will walk up on you when you least expect it. I know I was preaching on the street corner. There was a guy standing there for about 35 minutes listening, and another guy right there, broad daylight. My wife was there, pregnant with my first daughter. And all of a sudden, the guy walked up, shot the guy right in the neck. We, uh, there, we, I wasn't preaching at the time. We, um, we had a band that was playing first for me to come and preach. We ran over to the guy and told him, if you die right now, you will not be with Jesus. The guy gave his heart to the Lord there, last, last another week, and he died. Mm. But he was there. Death will walk up on you when you need respect. Sure. The thing is, when, when, if you, if you, if you, once they, if they read my book, they'll, they'll find out a whole lot of battles. It took a lot of war for me to get here. And the only ones that were able, the ones that kept, fighting for me was all of those that were in that company. The owners of that company, the, 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 the employees that all used to go to church and everything, they were the ones that were fighting for me. But I tell you, you know, there's so many young people that are being completely deceived. They think all this money stuff like me. I was wearing tailor-made clothes. All my clothes was tailor-made. You know, drove nice cars and everything. I, I had respect and, you know, and, and, and ran around, did, did everything that you do in that lifestyle. But every day waiting for that death to come because I knew, like, there's a saying in the street, what goes around, come around, that's biblical. Sure. He that kills with a sword, he dies by the sword. Yeah. So, you know, when, so um, I remember one guy, uh, some guys walked up to me one time, because the, 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 when we came into this one neighborhood and, and we took it over, the older guys, they said to us, you know, after they became real good and they got to loving us as, you know, friends, they said, you know, man, they had, we had a hit list on you. What? When I was only 17, I'm, I'm 19, almost 20, 20 years old. And they're telling me, yeah, when you first came, all you did was put this guy on. This place became real hot. But you know what? We're going to take you out. From that day forward, they didn't know that stuff that stuck in my head. And I kept wondering, man, who else got a hit on me? Yeah. You know? It's like that verse that says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? And yeah. you can have nice cars, nice clothes, even a lot of money. You can have everything to strive for. But if you lose your soul, what good does it do you? Yeah, the, it, you know. the, the, the thing is that, that even having all that, I was never happy. Yeah. Never happy. No peace at all. Never happy. So, so, so like right now, you know, even starting tomorrow, I had to go to Ohio to go and speak in some prisons. And, and, and from here on, I'll be going to penitentiaries and everything. You know who's requesting me to come? The inmates. Because somebody read my book, and they told them they go to the chapel. You need to get this guy in here. So Excellent. when I go in the street corners and preach, and I see all these people coming up, getting saved and crying and everything, and, and then I see them trans their lives transformed, they say, I would have wished I found this sooner. Mm. You know, I wrote a poem real quick. It says, I lived in a city full of violence and crime. It scarred me so deeply and it kept me so blind. At the age of 12, I was demon possessed. I pleaded for God, please put me to rest. I gained a reputation like the gangsters of old. So confused, deep as high, with beholds in my soul. Cried to the heaven, not knowing indeed if there was a God who had mercy on me. Jesus called me three times by my name. He cleansed me with his blood. He took away my shame. I started a new journey with the Lord who loved me. He gave me peace, love, and joy. I could have had all this when I was just a little boy. But I'm a young man that didn't know too much about life. But now to me, I don't have to think twice. I stole enough thread. I took a lot of people's bread. I drank wine, did crime, never seen to do no time. I was known to be smarter than Jack the Ripper and a whole lot stronger than Rick Von Zipper. I was known to be the king of all kings with a million queen. But now today I'm serving the Lord. He came into my life when I opened the door. Jesus was a man who was sent from above to fill my heart with I ain't never felt the Because he come to me, I had to look and see. Things get in my way, I cannot destroy. Jesus is a man who filled me with joy. And this is the reality today. I'm a happy man. I love, uh, when, when I got saved, uh, five years later, I met my wife, and she added to my happiness. When I had my girls, they added to my happiness. When I, grabbed, when I got my grandchildren, they added to my happiness. And, nice. and it's, it's so, 
And that's you know, full circle redemption right, right there, right? But but I tell the young people today, a lot of this is nothing but a facade, man. A lot of this stuff that you think is it, it, here, there, sometimes you're going to end up in the wrong place. I wrote a book of poetry, a whole a lot of poetry, and it talks exactly how they got there and the only way to get out. Yeah. And how guys got there and the only way to get out. And it's sad when I got friends of mine that have been in prison now 40 something years that calls me up. I send them every now and then some finances to help them out. They've been in there all them years, man. And they say, I wish I could be out there with you doing what you're doing today, yeah. man. Wow. Amazing. Well, you definitely can get Joey's book uh, called I Live to Tell About It right here by Joey. It's his story of himself. You can get that at, what's the website? Uh, Joey, JoeyPressMinistries.org. Okay. And you can uh, reach out to Joey. Uh, I'm sure he would be available to anybody who would reach out to him in a similar situation of, of being in a deceptive lifestyle. Because really, riches can be deceptive. Make you think you have a security when you really don't have security. Only Security is only found in the person of Jesus Christ. And anything outside of that is a false security, no matter how good and how promising and how respectful it, it can be. So that's amazing testimony. Former drug dealer, former gang member, gang leader, now new creation in Christ. And God fulfilled his word to you. He said he was going to use you, and yep. he is using yeah. you. And that's the thing about God. You can always take him at his word, uh, even if it's a spoken word that he gives you like, like he gave you when he called you. I'm going to use you, and he's been using you ever since. Amazing testimonies gone all around the world, and uh, it's just amazing. Amen. God bless your testimony. God bless this podcast that people would see it and make a positive decision as a result. Right. So this is Greg Winslow again, another testimony here, amazing testimony of I was a gang member. I was a drug dealer. I was in and out of prison. All sorts of I was on yours, now a new creation in Christ. No one is beyond repair. No one is beyond God's reach. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things. And that is for everybody and anybody. We can call on the Lord. Jesus will answer. Pastor Joey, thank you for your testimony, your time. It's great testimony, and we're going to believe that God will do mighty things through that. Amen, amen.